Hello and welcome to the fifth and final installment of our Interior Design Essentials webinar series. My name is Zoltán Tull. Over here is, as always, our resident architect, Mr. Ilyes Pa. Hi there. Like I said, this is the final installment. So far we had uh, four shows. If you haven't seen them, you can check it out on the website under the webinar archives. But let me just get you up to speed uh, what we had so far. So first of all, we looked at the basic interior feature set of our Stein. We created a very simple model. And then we looked at how to create kitchen design elements. We looked at uh, cabinetry, uh, carpet furniture pieces, uh, worktops. And we also looked at uh, certain aspects of bathroom design that mainly covered tiling, tiling layout, and quantity takeoffs. The show just before that focused on visuals and lighting and how to create stunning renders using the, uh, the programs feature set. Today's show might not be that you know, spectacular, there would be not that much to see in terms of visuals. However, it's going to be very useful when it comes to documentation because yeah. that's what we are looking at uh, today, how to get numerical and graphical data out of your model. Let's talk about this model, what we have here. This might be actually familiar to some of you uh, if you attended the first webinar, um, because this is the reception room, the dining slash uh, uh, reception room layout, what we created during the first time mm -hmm. when we showed how to add the 3D elements. Now, today we are not going to focus on how the, how the furniture pieces and the textures were added. Uh, for that, you can rewatch the first show. Instead, we are going to look at how to create the, some kind of documentation from it. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us uh, in a couple of words what we are going to look at today? Well, actually, first we will focus on a feature that is usually common at the very first Im initial stage of design when you even don't have the model, uh, and that's the mood board. We will cover that feature. It's, it's actually built in the software, um, but uh, it's not a problem if you already have a project. And in that case, actually, you can also use uh, something that we call as a snapshot. We will take a snapshot and we will insert that as well uh, onto the uh, layout. And also we will create a few elevations, wall elevations. Uh, we will document them. We will add uh, annotations, uh, also um, text uh, descriptions. And finally, we will, of course, uh, document the, the 2D layout, the, the floor plan itself. And at the end, uh, I will show you how to assemble a print layout, a plot layout, uh, how to work with that, how to print it. And at the end, we would like to at least create a PDF file, so you will see how that goes. Uh, I will mention uh, at the end likely that uh, Arslan also comes with uh, quantity takeoff, which is mostly part of the documentation. But as we already covered most of the documentations connecting to the previous sessions, we won't go that much detail into that. I will just simply mention where you can find that. That's right. So it's quite a lot. So let's get to it. First yes. stop <coughs> would be the mood boards and snapshots. Now, for those of you who are not that familiar with this, uh, this idea, what are mood boards used for? Well, the mood boards are, uh, are actually virtual papers that when you uh, open up, uh, you can collect uh, images, textures, um, text and uh, all sort of other information to kind of paint the mood of that design that you will have. And uh, this can be printed as a PDF, I get, you can generate a PDF file uh, out of it and you can send it to your clients. And as we create it already as part of an existing project, we will be able to bring in details from this project as well. So I think I just simply prepare one and we will see how that works. You can find the, the, the mood board tool under documentation. It's here and it allows you to prepare, a, uh, literally prepare a page and this page can be any sort of size. I will mm -hmm. go with the standard A4 size, but as you can see, you can actually uh, set up a custom size. You can set up the uh, orientation. And what I'm about to disable now here is the, is the kind of plot stamps, the, the title boxes, which I will use at the end for yes, the, we'll for the other session. Detail. Yeah, so let's just say, okay. And there is the uh, page, the white paper with the blue boundaries. Actually, those are the margins of the page and everything outside the margins won't be printed. So I should keep my content within this uh, frame. And now what I will do, I will use these tools. First things first to bring in a roster image. To bring in a roster image, I already collected uh, a few images from online. I downloaded image files. And to assemble the layout, all I need to do is just to select one of the image, click open. I can set up the size, but mostly we set them up graphically. So I just move my mouse over the drawing, click once and again, 
and then I have one uh, image already here. And the same way, I will br keep bringing in uh, other content, like for example, this image here, I click on it, okay. I will kind of overlap them, so I will also talk about how you can set up the... The priorities and the overlapping. Yes, yes, the, those sort of things. And you can use this tool to open uh, raster image, browse the raster image, bring in the raster image, but as you, as you can uh, do it with uh, other sort of types that, uh, file types that ArchLine support, you can actually open up your file browser and from that file browser, you will you, you can actually drag and drop any sort of image like this image or this image. And then when, once you do that, let me just do that again. Uh, th this way you can uh, bring it in. The only uh, time when you cannot import these uh, things is that when there is some sort of restriction from the operating system. Mm -hmm. In that case, you can still use the raster image tool. I think I will uh, import this one now and I will just keep importing at I know least it's two not more. less relevant at, in, in terms of mood boards, but uh, the same image editing uh, <coughs> tools apply here. So you can set the transparency, for instance, you can rescale these images and you can crop them as well. Yes, you? yes, yes. I will actually make uh, yes. this sort of uh, editing with uh, the images. So now I'm just assembling a few of these uh, images and then what you talked about, as you can um, remember that when you select an image, you can set up the size here. Uh, now we are working in millimeters. You can work in any sort of units. So you can change it in the software settings. But if this option is turned on, then you, then once you change one size of the image, like I'm changing the height only to 80 millimeters, the other will be changed proportionally. Um, to bring an image forth, uh, as you can see, when I put an image and I put another image on top of it and another on top of it. It's this this is how you assemble the you know the the drawing order. But you can actually actually later change the drawing order. When you go here and you say that you would like to change the draw order to front of this image, then it will bring that uh, thing in front of the others. And then you can for example rescale it when you select it. There is the rescale tool to scale the image and then you can actually just set up the uh, different size like this. Also, you can crop the image. Let's say uh, perhaps this image is just too tall. In that case, you go here, you can click on crop image, you select the image and then you can click on the top of the image or the side or the bottom and then you can just move it someplace else and hit enter and then the software uh, crops the image. So this way you can even edit the images. Also, you can flip the image. How about text? Uh, text you can use uh, and bring in by using the drafting tools. And there's a text and there's this uh, place uh, text tool. And then I, I think I will just name it simply mood board. So you just type the, the text that you would like to place there, perhaps your name, the name of the project, yes, uh, any yes. sort of uh, text, and then you just place it. By default, the text is, is in a very large size. It's, uh, if you select the text, it, it tells you that the font size is 200 millimeters, which is okay, the because same Because this is optimized for the one-to-one -one scale yes. in which you were working so far. If I, if I use this next to the building or under the building or on, on, the, on the floor plan layout, it works uh, brilliant. But now I'm on a paper, which is in itself uh, so like around 200 millimeters. So I need to change that. Uh, I think I will use 20 millimeters. It's, uh, it's much better and I just zoom in. I can also change the font if I want to change it to uh, anything else. And then I can also uh, move this text around. And uh, a very important thing is that now it's not coming up that much because the, uh, the text is, is overlapping the images, but all the text and 2D items and even the 3D items, they have this draw order setting. So if I would like to make sure that this, this is always appearing on top of the others, I, just, I should just set this up. So it doesn't matter what kind of elements you are going to keep on importing here, the text is always going to be on the top. Yeah, except the, except the one uh, scenario when the other item that you place here also has the same priority, like number one, in that case you have to use uh, a different level of uh, priority or importance. How to thing. import textures and color? Uh, if you would like to import a texture and it's part no, of I mean your... the texture that I have already used in, in the model because I see that you imported one yes. seamless texture when you downloaded it, but what happens if you <coughs> want to import one from the model? If you would like to import one uh, from the model, then you should just simply go there. As you can see now, this uh, mood board is part of the, of the project. 
And uh, if you zoom into a part of your drawing, like for example here, and you right click and you say you would like to find that material and then you have this material over here, then let me just swap drawings, then I can drag and drop this over here and use it as a raster image and place it perhaps, for example, here. So this way you can bring in any sort of materials that you used or you can find in the design center. It's not necessarily going to be used. So whatever you find there, you can just zoom in. You can refine the position of the text. You can refine the position of the, uh, the texture that you brought in and you can also rotate it and rescale it. So it works uh, pretty much the same as, as all the other images. How about colors? Because you are able to bring in textures, of course, but when you want to position a certain color scheme, then what do you do? Well, one of the solutions is that you just use, a, use the hatch tool. The hatch tool allows you to draw a polygon, a boundary for that uh, hatch, and then you can just simply uh, fill that area with a color, for example. Now what I'm doing, I'm just uh, painting uh, an area with the same size, like this here, and I hit enter. Now see, there's only one line, but it's only because this hatch pattern is just... It's too large. It's, yeah, it's, it's just not, too large. It's not so dense enough to... If be. I select it, it, it tells me to see yeah, that this is a hatch, but instead of this strip pattern, I will use a solid fill and then I go to the fill color and I disable the no color setting and I will perhaps use a, uh, an RAL uh, color like this clay brown or this red brown or any, any sort of color that I think matches my design. And I say, okay, now it's there. And this way I can even add the text describing what sort of uh, color code is this which I can purchase. You said that you're not able to bring in any three-dimensional data onto the mood board because this is a 2D documentation. Yeah. What happens if I want to document somehow my 3D model and include that in this mood board? That's uh, actually um, not that much difficult. You just uh, zoom in to your 3D uh, model, the, the perspective that you already have. If you want, you can rebuild the 3D model. We already covered that, how you can uh, refresh uh, the 3D content when something changes. And then uh, you just need to take a photograph, a snapshot, we call it, of this uh, image. Uh, now, if I remember that there is this snapshot tool, but I don't know where it is, I can actually find it. It happened with me with uh, one of the previous sessions. If I forget where it is, I just uh, type snapshot. I know that that's the name of the... Uh, snap shot and then the software uh, finds the the command uh, itself can you start the command from, from yeah this if software? i click on the command then i can start yes. but if i remember that it told me that it's in documentation and i can find it over there now there is a specific tool to create a snapshot of a 3d view so i should use that now and then i can set up the resolution of that image uh, which is uh, now the, the 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 largest size of the image in this case it will be the width and then I can set up the format of the saved image because I can actually save it onto the hard drive or I can just instruct the software to put a copy onto the floor plan, which, which is the one that I will do now. And then the software uh, offers me this uh, image placement tool and then it appears there automatically. And then from here you can do anything with it. Yes. So one, sorry, one yeah. thing to point out here is that this is in a one-to-one -one scale now, yeah. right? So if you want to put this to the mood board, then you would have to do the same thing as you do with, with the text, that you have to rescale and resize it. Yeah, one thing, if I already saved it on my computer, not, not on the drawing, but on the computer, I will just browse the same way. I just uh, bring it in, set up the starting point, the, the oh, yes, other so endpoint, then and then just... I can just scale it when I place it. But if I make a copy of this, or I just, uh, I use Control X to cut, it, cut this image, Control X, I set up the uh, reference point. point and then I zoom here, and then I paste it here, it's Control V. And see, that, that thing happens, what you ex uh, explained, that it's, it's to too large, too let's large. just place it somewhere here. And well, yes, it's, it's gigantic, and it's because it's one-to-one, -one. so literally uh, an, an A4 size paper next to a building like this would look like this in size. So what I need to do, I need to select this, go back to di documentation, mood board, scale image, and just simply scale it down to a reasonable size and then I can move it someplace else. Perfect. Now let's talk about the the um, kind of documentation where you already have some kind of uh, measurement and numerical data and I think this is widely used by, by interior designers and that is uh, elevation views or wall views, it depends how you call it. And um, that is interesting because 
unlike what we did so far, we are going to do this directly from the floor plan. So we navigate into the 2D view and from here we can see an elevation view of the wall we want to work on. Yes, yes. How does that work? There is actually two type of uh, elevation views, wall elevation views. One is the kind of graphic uh, mm -hmm. elevation view where you will be able to see all sorts of colors, paintings it's even. A, it's a texturized. It's a textured uh, view. And there is also another one which is mostly for drawings and they are actually called that way. One is the image and one is the drawing. So I will use the first one first. Uh, I click on the wall which I would like to include in my wall view. So I click on, and, and most importantly, I click on the proper size. Uh, instead of this, I click here now. And then I set up the depth of this wall view. And see, now this tiny, narrow wall view would be generated only. But if I click here and I use offset to make it wider and I click mm -hmm. there, then this will be the wall view that I will use. So let's go with this. I hit enter. And then the software at the right bottom corner, you can see now it generated a tiny th thumbnail of what I will get. And then I can set up uh, the, the proper size. And it's, it's a snapshot as well, just as we did it before. So it will literally take a photograph of that part in a certain resolution. And then I can put it into the floor plan, for example. Or again, I'm able to save it on my hard drive. So let's say OK. And then let's just place it someplace here, for example. So there's the wall view. And just as we mentioned, this is an image. So if I zoom in, it's, uh, it's nice. It's having all the features, all the texture and, and so on. But if I zoom uh, too much, it uh, falls apart. Yes, I will see it pixelated. And that's normal. That's what we wanted. This is, this is the image um, uh, wall elevation. This is also coming with real size. So you can measure it. You can add all the data that I will do add yes, uh, so later. We'll see that in a second. Can we just uh, look at the, uh, the line uh, drawing? Uh, yeah, version? that's the drawing. And it starts the same. You select the wall part. You set up the depth. And now the software generates the uh, elevation. I just snap them next to each other so we can see the difference. One is a line drawing and one is a texture view. And the line drawing is literally created by lines. So it's not, it's never get, uh, it never gets pixelated. It's always, uh, it's vectorial. That's the difference. Sometimes people use them for two separate purposes and sometimes uh, they just use one or the other and sometimes they combine them. So if you would like to combine this, uh, these two views, you just select this. You click here, you say you would like to move this uh, image from this point to this point, and then they are, now they are combined. Which one is better for documentation and measurements, the, the image version or the drawing version? It really depends on, on uh, which you like or which you need for your uh, purposes. Uh, one, the one is more like an, uh, a vector drawing, as, as it was. Mm -hmm. And the other one is sometimes mostly for artistic reasons. And that's why they, uh, the users, sometimes they, they just simply combine them because they need both. Can we place a couple of measurements on this? Yes, uh, there's the dimension tool, uh, the dimension tool set here. And this collects uh, all sorts of dimension types, like for example, the elevation section. And it's uh, very simple to use. First things first, you need to set up the zero point. So now the software won't recognize where's the zero point. You can actually set up a different zero point if you want, but now I would like to use the floor level as the zero point, so I click here. And then I measure the bottom of the frame, for example, and I move uh, this uh, dimension string someplace here. And then I click on another value, on another value, and for example, another value to just to measure these things. So once I already set the first dimension, the software will automatically align the rest uh, to the first positioned uh, item. How about some other measurements? Uh, if it's not an elevation data, maybe um, a length dimension? Or yes, there is the, there's the aligned dimension with which I can, for example, measure this distance or I can click here and here to measure the height of this room. Uh, so it really depends on where I click. Uh, I can even measure where these, uh, the, where, the, where the distance between these two points are and so on. So I can measure whatever I want. This is the simplest measurement. This will work uh, all around also in this, uh, this 2D layout as well. Do you measure the, the 2D layout the same way? So you have to manually measure things or? There will be things that you will measure with the, with the length tool, but I always suggest to use this first, either the O walls or the walls tool. I will use the first one now. And uh, this uh, gives you a range of possibilities that, that you can select and add to the execution list. 
and uh, this list is also kind of a drawing order i mean uh, this uh, will be executed in this specific order first the, the doors and windows then the wall and points and connections and and then finally the wall and points so if i click ok then what i need to do i need to select my building or or, or, or the whole drawing that i would like to measure completely and then i hit enter and then I move my mouse somewhere where I would like to see the first first uh, dimension string, like for example over there. And then the software measures uh, the distances uh, first on the where the door and window axes are, and then the width uh, between the two walls and wall connections, and then the the breakpoints in the in the elevation. Perfect. And if you want to add additional measurements, then you have to do it manually. Yes, right? in that case, I can use the same. Like I use the align dimension, and, and I would like to measure the width of this uh, this furniture, for example, or distance between chairs, or distance of the uh, units, uh, or or this distance here. I can I can just use the same. There are other several uh, uh, items or or commands like you can, you can add uh, annotation labels and things like that. Mostly people also add the elevation on floor plan. Uh, this works very same, um, very easy. You can just select the, the item that you would like to measure. You can pick a point on that item, let's say the side of this wall, and then you can decide which point or the bottom, the bottom most or the top most point you would like to ask uh, to be measured. I will go with the floor level and I say, okay, I can select another symbol if I would like to use another one, I will go with the default and then I can just place it somewhere here. Perfect. Talking about annotations, uh, what other features we have? Uh, first I thing mean, is first, maybe yeah. of texts and things like that. Regarding so. text, uh, it's, uh, the text tool is widely used also on the floor plan because of descriptions, notes, and for example, things like the ceiling height. I, I just placed this text here, which is the latest uh, used text, that was the mood board, and then I click here, click inside the text, and I change it to, let's say it's the ceiling, uh, height and it's uh, 2700 millimeters for example and then that's just actually a, a, a text perfect uh, something to point out here when we imported the text here it was the exact appropriate size because yes. it was actually um, aligned with with the one-to-one -one scale and we didn't have yeah. to rescale it any further um, for instance, if you want to put down a, maybe an entry sign or something like that? Those are coming with the, um, with the symbols uh, and those are actually groups. You can, you can place groups from here or you can go to the design center, the home page of the design center and there are you know, all the possibilities like doors, windows, objects and so on and there is this group, uh, there is this um, group library where you can go in and you can find for example signs here and I think there is one with the arrows and I can just drag and drop this and uh, place it somewhere and then I can also of course rotate Let, let's just completely rotate it uh, 180 degrees and then I will use this um, move uh, tool to move it someplace here for Perfect. example so I think now we are moving towards the part when we are going to compress all these documentation parts into a plot layout. Before that happens, I think it's, it's worth mentioning a couple of, couple of things and issues about the layers. Um, for, for some of you, I mean, I think most of you, uh, layers are nothing new. So you know how to handle them, how to work with them. But for those who, who haven't worked with them before, <coughs> We're mainly going to talk about what their benefits are. So how you can use that to customize what you want to actually print and copy to a layout. So what do we see here? The most important thing to mention here that everything, every sort of text, line, roof, wall, and everything goes to a layer. So there is no item that won't have a layer. The, the, the question is that uh, either you use the default settings of the software, you would like to put these items on certain layers that you would like to use, it's actually your, your, your choice. Whenever I created anything in Archline, it was automatically placed on the layer what the setting was for that item. For example, before we go uh, deeper into the layer properties management, which I just started, uh, let me show you how you can set up, for example, a wall to go on a certain layer when you draw it. If you use the building tool, before you start the wall tool, you right click there and you, set, you check the properties this is where you can change where this wall will be created uh, in terms of uh, layers. So if you select another layer, this, the following wall that you will create from now on will, will go to a different layer. If you would like to check where this item is exactly, then you can zoom in, select it. Let's just go to the wall 
and it's here and then here you can see that this wall is actually on wall one if you would like to move an existing item to another uh, layer to change the layer setting then you should just open this list and select another layer so this is how you can place it uh, onto another layer so this way you can organize your content even before creating it or after you create it it really depends for example my scenario is usually i just quickly create the the, the, um, the quick drawing the, um, the concept and then i start detailing it because then i know what will be the purpose of this design how i would like to detail it so i usually go to this stage um, after a few hours when i'm already working into this uh, project and then i start to separate things mostly we uh, we recommend to to separate the when now we are talking about interior design projects so we recommend to separate these things onto layers uh, by room names so for example mm -hmm. i should have um, like for example living room furniture and re living room decoration for example living room curtains and things like that living room lamps at least these three or four uh, package you should set up room by room and then you will be able to control what you will see not just on the rendering as we covered it before but also when you would like to create something like what I will do now I will uh, create two separate versions of the same drawing then this is what you can use for that. By turning on and off certain layers you can customize what you want to show. Yeah if you would um, like to create yes. sorry if you would like to create new layers then you should go to the layers layer properties manager and then when you see all the layers then you can add a new layer so you can design or create or name another layer and then use it to move things onto that layer. If you click on the use layers then the software uh, shows what layers are in use, what, what are the layers where you actually placed any, any sort of item, either text, line, slabs or anything else. And then it allows you to even turn these off uh, or just make them non-printable and, and things like that. But it's actually uh, the manager of the layers. If you would like to manage the layer statuses, then I think the best if, if you use the, the layer walk and the layer walk offers this simple and very visual uh, tool to be able to set up what you would like to see like for example if I would, would like to see the walls in combination with the slabs and one of my dimensions then this is what I will do this is how I set up uh, the, the layout and I say okay and then now I have this layout if I go back to the um, layer walk again and I select everything from top to down and I select OK then I will see everything. Perfect so now we are going to comply all this and prepare a plot layout. Before we do that one yes. more thing I just realized I, I forgot actually two things. Uh, uh, the room name? The room name I and, was about the, and the to north ask you that at the end but yeah. I, okay. think, I think we could, we could talk about here so these are also annotations one thing what we missed is that we uh, Arshpan has a tool which is able to recognize the room boundaries and basically <coughs> it can tell you the the uh, total area of that location and you can name the room and you can add portray other information bits as well so if we position it now we can see that these blue lines recognize the boundaries and now it tells you that it's a living room this is a um, usually an arbitrary name so this is from the list and you know whatever you have on the top that will be the name most likely so you can rename that in the in its, in its menu let's you say just it's also a kitchen it. that's right and you can also add additional um, data to it for instance the covering or the floor finish you can choose from the drop list whatever you I think it should want. be pocket you can click on redraw here and then the software will bring this in and when it's if you say oh, well that's okay and it will represent it you can move this text someplace else as well even outside the the, the boundaries the most important point for this sort of room and area tool is that it is automatically uh, recognizing the room shape even the changes so if I move this wall and change the wall size then I update this uh, room book this room room and area uh, measurement and then the software will auto auto measure the changes um, right. but there it, there is another feature when if you would like to uh, you know measure something that has no walls surrounding it then this this tool is not useful then you will use this room and area tools yes, because and then for instance this this balcony doesn't have any any walls or anything what what could actually yeah. determine where the, the boundaries where the boundaries are so if that happens you can just uh, manually uh, select the area what you want to measure 
Yeah. Because you know that there would be no other rules. I, I don't have to follow the contour. I can make any kind of uh, arbitrary boundaries. For instance, if you have two rooms, one has tiling, the other one has, uh, has maybe hardwood, then you can yeah. distinct, make a distinction between them. Yes, yes. And also you can set up the height of, uh, of the walls and slabs. And it's meaningful if you would like to also cover the, I mean, you would like to also collect the information about the volume of this uh, area. But now it's not that much important, so I just keep it, I just say, okay, and then there is this information. Now I Again, will change can, it. It's not a room, move. so I go to the settings of the room and the area, and I go and change it, and change its name to from room to terrace or Perfect. something The other like thing that. we wanted to talk about is the north side, I think. Yeah. Which is again a two-dimensional group with one major distinction, right? Yeah, the, the, that distinction is that first things first, again, these are groups. So you can find them here. You can go to the signs and let's say I would like to place a north sign which looks like uh, this here. So I just bring it in and I just place it and I can even rotate it. Now, now the most important thing is that if I use a different north direction than this, I change it and then I place the, the, the north sign, it will auto, auto align itself with the north direction. Right. And uh, one thing that is uh, something that I think it's useful, but not many people know about it. Now, this is a colored um, sign, but sometimes if I would like to make it completely black, then I can just click here and I can just force the color which I used here and then the software will paint it according to that right. color. So now our floor plan is, is really taking shape. So I think now it's the time to put this into a plot layout. Yeah, let's make it. Um, the plot layout is actually um, also a virtual paper. It's a virtual paper like the mood board is a virtual paper. So actually it starts the same way. I go to the documentation and I uh, select this plot layout tool and there's the first one it's about preparing the plot layout and it comes with the same setting I can set up the paper size I can set up the orientation and if I would like to I can turn on using a default uh, plot stamp uh, title box now this uh, title box is also a group so I will show you how you can create it the software is also shipped with default uh, title boxes so now I will use one of these. Uh, let's say, well, I think this should be A3 because we have a lot uh, a to bit, cover. A larger. So A3 landscape with this one, let's go with this. And then uh, the software, yeah? Yes, just let's, let's just stop here for a second because this, uh, what I'm about to tell you also applies to the mood boards. So you see that a couple of things appear. We started with a simple 2D, 3D uh, view layout, but now we have certain additional viewports opened up. Where do I find these drawings attached to my, my project? So where do I find them? If I accidentally close this or I want to retrieve another one, where do I find these? Okay, let's say, um, first things first, uh, while we are here, when I yes. use this uh, title box, the software realizes that there's a title box and it offers this um, fill, up, fill up form where I can change the date, for example. Let's say it should be somewhere in March, for example. And I say, okay, so now that information is appearing there. Uh, but let's say I forgot about it and I already started working on other parts of the software and then, then I'm about to come back to here and now I would like to assemble uh, this layout. Now then I will find all my drawings here at the Project Navigator. The Project Navigator collects all the drawings, active or inactive hidden uh, views that you accidentally or int intentionally closed. Those will go to the hidden views and from here you can as assemble the content. So if I would like to put this ground floor here, then I can do that. I just drag and drop and I will use, let's go with 1 to 50. I think it will, it will do. And then I just move it to this position, for example. And now I'm done. So now I realize that the content is too large. I can go and select it, go to the details, change the scaling and so on. Or I can just simply skip this part. That was part of the original drawing. So I, I can click on this layout and move this boundary by clicking on it to the left and chop that part off. Mm -hmm. So after that, I can decide to use this uh, again, but in that case, only this part. Now there is two options for that. First things first, if I'm direct Dragging this inside again, let's say this should be 1 to 200 now. That should do. I can place it with two different scalings. 
I can do the same thing here and I can use a different uh, sort of uh, layer setting as well here. So I can go to the settings, go to the layer page and let's say I don't want to see anything. So I turn off everything instead uh, except the wall layers. I would like to see the stairs if there is any. I would like to see the slabs uh, as well. Let's turn on these, a few of the dimensions perhaps. And so, so now I'm about to set up a completely different layout uh, of the same drawing. And I say, okay, now I'm satisfied with this. Let's say, okay. And then I have this same drawing into different representation. So this way you can actually set up two, three, four different representations for electrical design, for the uh, furniture layout, the, you know, the tiling, or just the architectural layout. You can use the same drawing for these purposes. I see, and, and it's very important that these drawings are still in co direct connection with the 3D model, which means two things. If you <coughs> modify something in the 3D, it has um, changes in the, in the layout. That's one thing, that's one thing what we are going to show. The, the other is actually that uh, you can customize what you want to show from that drawing because even though it only had a certain set of layers now enabled, but if you go back to layer settings, you can still enable them. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's, right. not, it's not a closed uh, format. Yeah, so now no. what, what happens here is that Ilish made a um, tiny change. He moved one of the chairs. And uh, let's see how this reflects on the plot layout. Yeah, so let's imagine we worked on this project uh, for a month and yes. then we finished and it was published. The user started working with it, but there comes the time when we need to make adjustments. And then I go back to that project, perhaps two months later, I make a change and then I have to republish this which I already assembled, how to follow that change. I made the change on the 2D and I would like to apply that change here. So as you mentioned, this is in connection with the other drawing. So if I click on it and I use the local menu of it, I will be able to refresh it. If I click here, now, now the software reapplies this whole thing with the same settings, just now with the updated changes. So now I can go there and which we will sh soon uh, show you can publish it as a PDF file or a printed copy of this drawing. Uh -huh. uh, one another yes. thing I wanted to show because there is an empty space here. Now there are options to, you can, again, you can use the import raster image. So if you made a render, if you made a snapshot, you can just place it here as well. Or uh, what I wanted to show you that even without placing the whole thing and, and you know, removing the, the borders, there is a tool to copy only one part to a plot layout. Yes, that way you don't have to chop down the, the things yes. that you don't need. So I can just directly tell the software that now this is the part that I'm about to place on that layout with this corner point. And then I go here and I use the paste to the plot layout and I use a scaling. Let's say it's 1 to 100 and then I'm placing it over here. Perfect. Okay. So that's how. Next, next thing. Um, yeah. How do we? Th there are there are still a few things. Uh, one is how we can make a customized uh, table of, of uh, data here. Yeah. And the other is how to push this into a PDF. Well, this as as I mentioned, it's a it's a group. Uh, that's uh, called the title box or plot stamp. If you select it, it actually tells you that that's a group. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually find this group if you go to the group libraries, and it was you know the home page of the design center, and there's group. And there you will find them in printing and there is the, this, this library with all the uh, title boxes that uh, either I created earlier or shipped with the software. So if I would like to place this here, I can just drag and drop it over and I can place it. Yes, so we just have those like a 2D uh, yes. piece yes. of, of Any sort of symbol actually. You can also design your own north symbol, north sign, and then you can save it into the software. And actually this is also how you can create a, a title box. So now I'm erasing this. And um, I usually recommend it to, to draw it on the drawing, I mean on the mm -hmm. paper, because in the, this, is, this is what I know. I have this white paper and this is the area where I would like to make it. So I already know that it should be, I don't know, two centimeter by 10 centimeters and so on. So I already have this paper here, so why not creating it uh, here? I don't have to uh, just imagine, but I can directly see how it looks like. So. I use the drafting tools uh, because actually a group is a bunch of uh, 2D items. It's it's a uh, it's you know they are well together in that uh, object or, or or group. So I use the the line tool. You can use any of these here, and I just draw um, something with a, a height of 20 millimeters, and then it will be 100, and that's 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 the thing that I'm about to create now. 
uh, with a vertical division, a horizontal division, and the vertical division here. So that's it. It's very simple now. I'm, I'm not wanting to waste the time by just drawing something that uh, uh, is my liking. Uh, but what I would like to show you is that once you create the layout, you can fill it up with the text that you would like to use. So I will use a text here. But again, again it's the just, text is huge. You have to rescale it. It's just huge. So I just use a different setting. This should be, I believe, six millimeters will be fine. Or if not, then I can still just further, ch further change it. And now I click here and I change it to say, this is designer. And let's go with this one. Okay. And uh, see now I perhaps need to change the layout, but much, but let's just keep it. That's, I think it's fine. I just align it nicely. And then I would like to save this. So I select this and I go to the drafting group and there is this create group in library. So if I go here, then I'm about to uh, set up the reference point. That's the point that will be by default used when you place the group. So the first point uh, will be first offered. So I, I click here, it's the first point, second point, third, fourth and fifth and so on as many as I want I can just decide to have and then to to tell the software that I'm finished with this I just hit enter and then I'm a, I'm about to name it so this should go to the library as a, I don't know title box by me and I'd, you know, the category for printing is okay and this should go to the English uh, subcategory and producer makes no sense here so I just hit okay. okay. So now every time you open up a new plot layout you are, you, you are able to add this uh, stamp. Yeah, actually it other. already appeared here because we are in the, in the English uh, and, and it's there. So that's, that's my stamp. If I'm not having this here I can just drag and drop it over there and see the first, the default uh, alignment point, the defa default uh, hotspot reference point is offered and I, and I can place it here and then I can change it. So let's just name it somehow else. Thanks. And then, <laughs> so, so that's it. So, so this way you can, if you fill this, uh, fill, fill, if you create a, a title box and fill it up with all the details, then the same way you can later change. If you prepare a new plot stamp, like, which I will do now, I go to um, documentation, plot layout, prepare plot layout, I design another one with the same size landscape and now I can go there and I can select this title box that I have just created. I will, I will go with okay, okay and then yeah okay I know that and then it's there. So I can again change it or just keep it as Perfect. it is and go on. So let's print the PDF out of this. The PDF is, uh, the, the printing is here. You can print either to your printer or into a PDF file. PDF uh, printing or creation of PDF is by default supported in the software. It's a built-in uh, built engine. Now I need to set up the name for that. Uh, and I think this should be uh, floor plan A3. And let's just go with OK. And this will be an A3 uh, size paper. And it should be landscape. Now it's nice, but oh, the project the content is very, very small, rather tiny, and it's because the scale factor. I already scaled it, so I it don't have to. hundred, and then we scale it again. Scale so it, yes, so I just go with one to one. Now it's much better. I can either align the content using these here, or I can just click on center the plot. Mm, then how come it's not in the center? But it's it's because actually now the whole content, the entire drawing, which is selected now. And the entire drawing is this and this together. So oh. if I move this to the left, we will see this other title box appearing at the right, I right, see. The right so bottom corner. So we have to get rid of that somehow. So instead of the entire content, I should go with window and click on this, and then click on the top bottom, uh, the top corner, the right bottom corner, and just simply to set that this is the area that I, I'm about to print. And then see now the content is uh, better, but I can't see it because it's off screen. So I again click on center the plot, and now it's centered. And now, it's, now it seems to be good because this is the content that I'm about to print. And now I think I'm done with the settings, so I just go and click on print. And then if I have an installed PDF reader uh, on Which my computer, do. it should automatically open up. And it should look open at, up. Look at our work to see see how. It and you know PDF files, uh, if they do not contain uh, contain too much uh, visual data of images and things like that it will open up uh, in, a, in a small size uh, PDF file which you can send 
uh, to your yes, clients. So it's a very good way to document your work, actually. In addition to you know the mood boards and the and the, all these kind of snapshots, yes. we can also accompany it with with a pl plot layout, especially if we combine the two together. And one last thing about printing, we will not cover that uh, now, but I would like to mention it because we have a tutorial about that, and it's in the file, and it's called the print queue. This print queue allows you to make a series of print tasks uh, by just simply adding them. If you would like to print this and this and this, these are print tasks that you can collect here. And most importantly, this print task list, this, this print queue is saved with your project. So if you sit there uh, in front of your computer half year later, you will see the same print queue and you don't have to reassemble them. And with, by using the print queue, you can also create multi-page PDFs as well. So it's, uh, it's a very useful uh, thing to have here. Great. Um, was there anything else? Well, I think, I, I'm thinking, but I think we covered there's, most there's of There's obviously the a lot of features which we haven't touched upon, but these Well, are one the thing that I mentioned at the beginning is the quantity takeoff. Yes. We won't cover it now in detail because we already, we already did, did that the at the kitchen sessions. and the bathroom uh, sessions. Make sure you check out them as well. Yeah. So um, obviously, like I said, these are the, the basic documentation features, and, and this was uh, for the whole five shows that we showed you the, the first few steps, and then you are feel you are free to experiment with yes. these and, and check out other videos that we have on this topic to learn more. Obviously, we are going to keep on continuing with this webinar series. We are going to get back to you shortly with another exciting topic. Thank you very much for the feedback and the questions that you are keep sending our way. Keep up the good work. This makes sure that these shows are very relevant, even if you are already a user or you're just getting familiar with the software. Vinish, thank you very much and for... Keep, keep giving us ideas about yes, shows. Yes, that's, that's very good. That's very useful. Thank you very much for showing, me, showing us all these things. Uh, we learned a lot together. See you next time. Until then, um, have great projects with our software. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.